Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. And because this is actually also a pens on the road, because right now I am filming this in beautiful downtown Fargo, North Dakota, we're going to talk about paper too, and we're going to wander around Fargo for just a bit. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, uh, have you ever been to Fargo? I think that's more likely than you've been to Minot. Uh, and maybe you could talk about how do you t what do you like as a notebook to take notes when you're at meetings or taking classes. So let's start by taking a look at the pens. Now, because I'm not in my nice set at home, I uh, don't have a looking down camera until I turn this one to look down. So we'll do it this way. So I'm carrying the pens in this puppy. Let me just see if I can see what you're seeing. Yeah, sorta. Okay, I'm carrying the pens in this puppy. This is just a nice Dustin for arrangement. I want to say it's a Lihit Labs type dealio. You've seen it before. Uh, so the pens that I've been using this week, and some of them I can't write with for you because you haven't seen their first impression yet, but I've been using this Senator Regent with a beautiful blue finish. I have been using, in fact, this was this week's review, my mystery pen, my, I'm calling it my central pen Isco. Uh, I've been using, you saw this one reviewed already, my central pen 10014. The other central pen is empty. This one might empty out tonight just with what I'm going to be writing myself. So, yeah. Another first I can't show you tonight, but uh, my Parker Ellipse. So after I've put up the first impression, then you get to see me right with it. Oh, and this guy came unscrewed during the day. So luckily he stayed in the cap. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see if I get a hard start tonight. Well, you'll see too. This is my uh, Toes Pencala Myrna. Next week's review, um, if I use up the ink this week, I'll just have to refill it. Darn. Uh, Tatung 717. Chinese vintage. Yes, uh, somebody actually this week asked me about, I don't remember the number, but a Camlin, which is a Indian brand, and they wanted to know about a specific Indian vintage model, and I had to admit that, no, I don't have one, but uh, there is some Indian vintage that will be popping up here one of these days in this channel, and you've seen some of it in the pens in use. Uh, this, which one is this? Oh, my Rex pen with some kind of green ink in it. That may be a problem. I may not remember what all the inks are, and I don't have my ink journal with me, so bear with me. I'll do my best. What is... Oh, wow. Senator President. This is just an awesome pen. Lamy 80, which I was sure would... Okay, my preview's not keeping up with me. But anyway, Lamy 80, which I was sure would be empty by now, but it's not. And finally, Omaso Jiva, which I can't quite believe I was brave enough to bring it here, but I think it'll be okay. So those are the pens. Let's see if I can figure out how to show you how they write. Actually, before I do that, maybe we should talk notebooks. I brought this. It's a Kakuyo notebook. It has a spiral bind. And several different types of papers, regular lined paper. I know some of you don't like that. Uh, I put, I didn't actually, I don't think I put any graph paper. No, I, I put some uh, blank paper in it. Kakuyo paper, by the way, is very nice. Oh, I did put some graph paper in. Oh, not very many sheets, but a few sheets of graph paper. And then in the back, oh, here's an interesting piece of graph paper that opens out. And I wish I had blank paper that did that. I've got the lined paper that opens out. Um, just some variety that way. So now I'm going to do my best to turn this into a looky downy thing. I had a brainwave, so uh, I guess you can see me and we can look at the pens. So uh, 
Well, let's just take a look at them. I'll give you a closer preview rather than refilm all that. We'll give you a closer preview as I write. But give you a quick look at the pens laying in their Lihit Labs case. And uh, while we're at it, let's just take a quick look at this Kakuyo notebook. All right, so one good thing that came out of this disaster of uh, filming was that I fig I realized I had to reset my white balance. So I guess that's a good thing because the original footage would have actually been very yellow. So this is the Kukuyo notebook I was using. Um, I'll, I'll put some previews in the some close-ups anyway in that high-res writing samples that I do. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, it has um, regular, sorry, I'm umming a lot. It has regular lined paper, which has a nice feature at the top, which that address is hidden under it. Don't worry, it's not a private address. That's Microsoft in Fargo. Um, Let's see, we've got, besides lime paper, I put in some blank paper. There's the original pens in use. Um, some graph paper from what I did today. We were actually doing some pixels. Because I'm, I'm here in Fargo for a computer science course. We did... Those pages are stuck together. They must have come out of a tablet. I, I also brought along... A few forms including graph and lined of this B5 to I want to say B7 anyway it opens up type paper I haven't used it uh, today or this week at all but it's it's neat for its application now this is the original writing sample I did and this is what I will upload uh, mainly because it has the same pens you're going to see today the difference is the pens you're going to see today are going to be one less because as I said in my introduction, that one really did run empty that night. So, funny of that. And I might be doing... Oh, actually, why don't I just show you this feature and then we'll pull that page out. So, one of the things I like about this is you just go... Press this button at the top. Oh, come on. Press the button at the top. Work for me, dude. There we go. And it opens up like a binder. You can take everything out, but it has the slim profile of a regular notebook. And I wanted to take that one out, so I'd remember to do the pens in the right order. Not, I suppose, that it really matters all that much, but I did kind of want to try. So this week you saw the central pen air quotes, ISCO, because I don't know what it is. Uh, somebody mentioned in the comments, what about the numbers around the ink window? I saw none. I see some scratches there. Yeah, those are definitely scratches. That's it. I see no numbers. So, uh, sorry. Let's get a little closer here. It's white, so you can't tell that it's the focus is jumping in and out. So this will be, it's not today, today is still Thursday, June 21st, 2019. So my central pen, whoops, let's get on screen here. Central pen ISCO. So named because of the ISCO nib. So I don't actually know its real name. I don't even know if it's actually a central pen. Rohrer and Klingner. Ugh. I gotta do better with this. Helianthus. So you have my set at home all figured out. But this one, since tonight will be... Probably the only time I film in it, not so much figured out. Uh, the Central Pen 10014, where'd I put it down? I cleaned it out. But there it is. It had uh, Diamine Cult Pens Deep Dark Green in it, which was quite nice. 
This next pen is going to get cleaned out tonight. We'll see if I can squeeze some writing out of it. I think I can. This is a Toes Pen Column Myrna. I was wondering what that noise was. It's uh, my camcorder rubbing against this desk lamp that's here. So Toes Pencala Myrna, which has a fine point nib. And that's what it does when it's starting to run empty. The ink in it is Bungu Box. At least you'll get to see some sheening maybe if it gets dry before the video's over. Bungu Box Sweet Potato Purple. But yeah, it is. In fact, I'm just going to set it on the desk rather than back in the pen case. Uh, then I have my Tatung 717 with Noodlers, Matahari's Cordial. This pen, when I first filled it up, the ink did not look right. But rather than rinse it out and refill it, I just kept writing and eventually it got to be the right color. Uh, this is a very wet pen, even though when you see the review, you'll see it doesn't look like it should be. It looks like it should have trouble writing. But it doesn't. It writes quite nicely. Uh, Noodlers. One of my favorite inks. I couldn't tell you why. It's kind of a goofy ink. But I love the color and, you know, that World War One theme just... Yeah, I, I, for some reason, I'm just fascinated by the First World War. Uh, did I show you the pen? I don't think I did. So why don't I just quick show it to you. Tatung 717. Chinese vintage rather than what you've seen typically from me. My Rex pen, because I don't actually know its model. Oh, and I'm so glad I refilmed this now because when, when I filmed this before, this was just, just looked like a black pen. Now at least you can tell it's green uh, because I adjusted the exposure. Working very nicely. Make sure this is on screen. Rex pen. Has one of those amazing Bach nibs. And the ink in it is Ackermann. Number 26, Grunmarkt, Smaragd. So far my only Ackermann ink, but although I have been suggested uh, a yellow ink to try. So I may get a sample, or who knows, maybe I'll get a bottle, but I'll probably get a sample because... Lord knows I don't need another bottle of ink, even though I did buy a bottle of ink today in Fargo. We'll get into that. Rex Pan C. Senator President. Raised a little controversy with that one. Uh, mostly I was just... It amuses me that government office, government office, but really the truth behind the name of this pen is probably name of company, serious sounding name. Pelican. Four zero zero ah, four zero zero one violet. And this pen is getting toward empty, so I'm pretty sure it won't be in next week's pens in use. I don't see how it can unless I just don't write the rest of the week. Uh, I have a... Oops, I can't show you that one. I have a Lamy 80. With a double broad nib. 
And the ink is Montegrappa. Bordeaux. Which is sadly discontinued, but I had some nice suggestions for that one too. So when I order my sample of that Ackermann, I will probably order samples of those suggestions as well. And finally, I'm kind of surprised I brought it with me to a meeting and this far away from home, but I did. So here she be. I brought along my Omas Ojiva. Also, will not be in next week's pens of use because this is darn near empty. I thought last night I'd empty it out, but I didn't. And this has a medium, extra flexibile nib. Oops, that looks like an EE, it's an EF. And the ink in it is Kiona Oto. Keshi Murasaki. So I'll close out this portion of the video without you seeing me because I only bothered to hook up the microphone because I was super disappointed with the quality of video I got off of that uh, camera I brought with me to focus on me. I, uh, you know, it, it's the camera I've used for live streams, but apparently it doesn't function so well in a motel room or uh, with Camtasia. I'm not sure what the issue was. I've always thought it did a very good job with my live stream, so I'm not sure what was up there, but I was very super disappointed. Let's zoom this out. And what I'm going to do now is take you into beautiful downtown Fargo, and we'll show you around a little bit. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. And we might talk a bit about the campus. And I'm going to turn this camera, this one, that's doing the writing samples, on to me. So, let's talk Fargo. So let me just say that this country boy made it through Fargo just fine, even though this is far from what I'm used to driving and way more traffic. So if I can do it, you can do it. But I toured up downtown Fargo after several misdirections and delays due to construction and traffic of only to come across happened. this. Yes, for 10 minutes I sat and waited for a train. Now, uh, further down the road, I see in Fargo people have the habit of stopping in the middle of intersections when the traffic is stopped so that the traffic going the other direction through the intersection can't go through. So I can only imagine what kind of a snarl up happened. Because look at this, one engine, two engines, three engines, four engines, five engines. So I knew there was a big load behind it. I was a little curious to see if there would be a pusher, because there would be a pusher at my end of the state, which would be a train at the other end. But as you can see, there was not, because Fargo's flat. It doesn't have badlands like I do. So, if you were watching the time marker, that was about 10 minutes of me sitting there waiting. <laughs> and yes, it was raining, so I didn't tour the way I wanted. That was just kind of a cool Catholic church. I parked near it. So, I took a little bit of film. Um old water tank I saw and a new water tank again just kind of cool old stuff and a look down Broadway which is the street I only toured part of it because as you can tell it's raining it's pouring rain so I just didn't tour as much as I planned to there's the old depot in Fargo I don't know if it's still in use I guess I could have looked that up and there's the offending tracks where I was stuck on the other side for 10 minutes just a neat bar sign. Grain Belt is a type of beer that made in Minnesota. It's okay. But here's the real star. Zanbro's Variety Store. Last year I planned to do a big thing about this, sh this store, but uh, that's when my hard drive had that horrible disaster and 
lost all kinds of footage, including an extended tour of this sh store. I didn't have time this year to really do it justice, so this is just a glimpse. Uh, quite a good glimpse, but they sell a variety of gifts and uh, high-end type stuff, cards. Uh, and then there's books. And I find it an interesting selection of books. It's perhaps, you know, it's smaller than, a say, a Barnes & Noble, so it's more, more curated. So it's a more selected collection of books. Uh, he has antiques in there. This, I, you know, on this channel, I had to show that case. He has fountain pens. In fact, uh, it's two brothers that run this one and the one in Sioux Falls. And the one, one of the brothers restores fountain pens and has an Etsy or eBay shop. I'll, I forget, but I'll put the link in the video description. So, I, I, yes, I did buy a bottle of ink, uh, the orange ink, whatever it is, Lamy. Uh, then there's an antique bookstore or slash used bookstore in the back, which apparently they also must have guest speakers or readings or something. It was well set up for that. And then this is looking out through the archway from the used bookstore part to the main part of the store. And then back outside because, like I said, I just didn't have time to do it justice. Uh, and I really want to see the, the Sioux Falls version of this store. So there it is, the outside of the store. Uh, of course, Fargo is growing, as you'll see in my uh, footage in the later part of the video when I talk about why I'm in Fargo. They are building and there's so much that's new. Downtown Fargo, old. But a lot of Fargo, new. Uh, I, of course, I just was enthralled with these city streets for some reason. You just don't see that. And those guys there, I wasn't even filming them, but the guy in red kind of took exception to me filming, so I just had, he wondered why I was filming. I was, oh, I was just filming the street. I didn't even see you guys. I'm sorry. So I cut out the part where they got close enough to be identified. Fargo Theater. Another look at the cranes, because I'm a physics guy. I got to look at the cranes. So cool. And here's where I decided I was getting wet enough and uh, I'd had enough, wanted to go back to my nice dry car. Uh, I looked up this alley. I don't know why I filmed that, but I know I should have taken it because of what I saw next. Not yet, but uh, in a minute. Just more city streets. That's the Presbyterian Church in Fargo. Nice old stone building. Never been in it. That. Uh, parking garage, but beyond it there's some um, construction going on. And what happened is, I couldn't walk through it, so I had to detour around through an alley, and it was awkward and annoying, and out of my way, and I was wet. But I did see this building, an old church that's been turned into a sanctuary, uh, community center, activity center, something. I saw that, that's a church. Interesting stuff on the top. Apartment building, I love the look of the ivy growing up the side, even though I know it's not always good for the brook. And apparently they like... Uh, Marlon Bundo from John Oliver. Pretty sure not from Mike Pence with that drawing. And then just some nice art on the back of the building beside it. So that was Fargo. Or I'm sorry, yes, Fargo. Uh, let's talk a little bit about why I was here. Like I said, Fargo is growing by leaps and bounds. This is south of the interstate. Everything is new here. It's a uh, Still pretty soulless and uh, lacking in personality. Although I will say they have made a good effort for their pedestrians. Uh, but everything is so spread out and uh, and it uh, just needs work and the trees need to grow and it needs time. We'll see what it becomes. But I was at the Microsoft campus in Fargo. Yes, Microsoft is in Fargo. In fact, uh, Fargo has one of the largest... Not the largest, but one of the largest Microsoft campuses in the world. Um, and it was really cool to be able to spend a whole week here taking this class on computer science. Uh, as the day I am filming this, this is the building where I took my classes, uh, the Commons building. but and, and this is overlooking their cafeteria from where we were at. Uh, and this was the classroom I was in. So, yeah, I'm a bit jealous. I wish I had something this nice. Cool outdoor cafeteria. And we got to take a tour of the campus. Uh, just another view of their cafeteria. We got to see it, but we didn't get to eat there. So, uh, these are just some random shots of their campus. And I'll tell you, my father worked in a cubicle for about 10 years in an office building. It was trashy, 
bad part of town, roof leaked, uh, you know, just an awful place. There's nothing like this. This really goes to show when you want to get the best out of people, give them a good environment. And can I say this as a teacher? I wish schools slash taxpayers would figure that out. Hey, maybe we'll get more out of our students if we show them we value them. Ooh, that's a cool walk in the background there. It connects two buildings, and uh, apparently it's not heated, but it you know it's it enclosed, and it's elevated so animals can pass under it. It's just a beautiful connection between buildings. Um, through a forest, as close as you get in North Dakota. And uh, this next picture you're going to see, it's lit only along the floor, which makes me really, really want to see it at night. I think this would be so cool. Um, but it also makes me think, Microsoft really put an emphasis on beauty and surrounding their employees by beauty, uh, making sure their employees are working in places lit by outdoor light. They have nature coming in. They have light coming in. And it's all, of course, to increase the bottom line for Microsoft. But it makes me think about schools. Why are we building schools with the cheapest possible furniture, the shoddiest construction methods? Why don't we look at beauty and all these other things for schools? Maybe we would get more out of kids if we thought about their comfort and the beauty of their surroundings. I don't know. I'm biased. I'm a teacher. I don't know. I've been at this almost 30 minutes. Well, okay. I've been, I've kind of spread this out over several days, but I think it's time to come to a close. I, I should tour the university and of course there's the airport. And there's a lot of other neat things in Fargo to see, but, uh, I mentioned when I did my Science Olympiad video, I brought my students here, and part of it was I wanted them to see a research university. Part of it was I wanted them to see a city. I think now that I've been to the Microsoft campus, if we make it to state next year, I would like to take them to Microsoft for a tour. Um, when you live in a small town, sometimes it's easy to forget the big world that's out there. And you get kind of wrapped up and you're just whatever's in the small town. And uh, I hate to say it, but a lot of the world passes small towns by. So I'm glad I have this available. Um, hope I'm excited to bring back the computer science to my students, of course. Uh, that, that's an option we've never had at our school before. And I'm excited for the possibility of bringing kids to the Microsoft campus next year. And I'm really hoping I can get into the other computer science class next year and recruit some teachers from my school to take it with me. Uh, I, I would like to get bigger computer science. You know, you, you can argue about different... But, how much computers are going to play a role in the future? A lot. But uh, I have enjoyed this class that I'm taking right now because it puts a big focus on equity and the fact that your computer people aren't just your people that look like me. Uh, they can be women. They can be minorities. Uh, they... They can come from all socioeconomic strata. Uh, I, I think that's uh, an important piece of this course I'm bringing back. And it's a course that's designed to look at all that and to take all that into account. So, yeah, I, I've, I, of course, I can't say it on video, but I have a few students picked out that I'm thinking, yeah, this is perfect for you. You're not the stereotypical computer science person, but this is a course you could succeed at. And might open some windows of opportunity for you to get you thinking beyond the limits of this small town you've lived in your whole life. Uh, nothing wrong with living in a small town. I live in a small town. But I do think it's a shame when people refuse to see what's out there. And they don't really ever leave home. And they just get trapped in that same small town attitude. Or these people that get... They're, they go to college with their friends. They hang out with their friends in college. They come back to their same small or big town. I mean, and I don't necessarily mean four-year college. Go to a two-year college. Go to a trade school. But get out. Go work in a different town. Go work in a different part of the country. 
try something different. You may decide, oh yeah, I want to come back to my small town, but you'll come back knowing a lot more about the world. I am glad that I got out of my small town. I have grown a lot. Uh, sometimes I wonder why I picked North Dakota, but there it is. It's where I am. Uh, and when I come to places like Fargo and see these opportunities, I think, you know, yeah, we, we've got this reputation as a small agrarian state where there's nothing going on. But there are things going on. You just have to look for them. And I think that's part of my job in this small school that I teach in is to help kids look for those larger opportunities and see the world that's beyond our town. Uh, aside from that, I hope you enjoyed the little footage of Fargo. I, I just didn't, like I said, I didn't feel like adding in the footage of the campus. I, If, if you can't tell, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I need to go to bed. So, uh, yeah, that we. I'm just not going to get to the campus tonight. Or if I do, I, I'm going to sound so confused that it will be worthless. So, I think this is a good place to close it. So... If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, have you been to Fargo? That's more likely than you've been to uh, Minot or my town. Um, what do you think? What do you think of our fountain pen store that has other stuff in it? I think that's very cool. Uh, what do you think of our Microsoft campus? Uh, let me know down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. Next week, I'll be back in my small town and uh, probably glad of it because I'm getting tired of traveling and uh, be glad to have a week at home. So I want to thank you for watching. And uh, oh yeah, the, the driving footage where I actually go up Broadway and tour Fargo will be uploaded at some point. I, I may do it as a kind of a standalone. We'll see. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.